expertos. El alcalde de Medellín, el alcalde de Quito, eh, pocas presentaciones necesitan. Esta es una conversación de 25 o 30 minutos. En la medida en que yo no tenga que intervenir mucho, mejor. Esta es su conversación, el tema que tenemos sobre la mesa, Hábitat 3. Hábitat 3, conferencia de las Naciones Unidas sobre vivienda y desarrollo urbano sostenible. Un reto para las ciudades, se va a celebrar en Quito el próximo mes de octubre, o sea, el alcalde tiene que conocer bien de qué se trata, porque si no, eh, puede que en octubre las cosas no vayan demasiado bien. En esa reunión se va a hablar de una nueva agenda para los próximos 20 años. La conferencia de la cual estamos hablando tiene su origen en los años 70. Vamos a ir directo al tema. Ustedes como alcaldes, con esos retos de sostenibilidad, hay que recordar, América Latina es una de las zonas más urbanizadas del planeta. Hay tres de las megaurbes más importantes del mundo. Buenos Aires, Sao Paulo y México. Bogotá, muchos de los presentes la conocen porque está aquí en es la capital de Colombia, no está muy lejos. Río de Janeiro también. ¿Con qué retos se enfrentan en este reto de sostenibilidad para acercarse a esos objetivos de Hábitat 3? Bueno, primero muy buenas tardes. Quiero empezar agradeciendo la invitación. Es un honor estar nuevamente visitando esta hermosa ciudad de Medellín, que es un verdadero ejemplo de innovación para toda América Latina. Y qué gusto además poder compartir este panel con su alcalde, Federico. Muchas gracias por la hospitalidad. Bueno, nosotros primero que nada estamos realmente honrados en Quito de ser la sede de la Conferencia Mundial de Naciones Unidas sobre Desarrollo Urbano Sostenible, Hábitat 3 misma que va a marcar el rumbo de los procesos de urbanismo a nivel mundial para los próximos 20 años. Es importante entender que esta es una conferencia que se realiza cada 20 años y por eso es de enorme importancia. El objetivo de la conferencia es eh, consensuar la nueva agenda urbana poniendo como centro del debate el derecho a la ciudad, el derecho de las personas a disfrutar del ambiente urbano. El año pasado se definieron 17... The urban um, environment. Now, two of those goals that have been set, number 11 and number 13, have a direct relationship with the cities. 11 talks about building cities and communities that are sustainable. That means that we have the challenge of making our cities safe, equitable, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable. While objective or goal 13 talks about climate Uh, uh, climate change at the urban level. I think that Habitat 3 will be a unique opportunity for cities to strengthen their role in the construction of the new urban agenda. Let us remember that these types of conferences in the past were reserved for the exclusive participation of the states, but cities now have a voice, and that is something very positive. And we believe that Habitat 3 will represent an ideal juncture to reflect the vision of Latin America in the construction of new, this new urban agenda so that we can execute it and implement it ideally. When we talk about sustainable development, the debate is deep to meet the needs of today without sacrificing those of the future generations. How, what is Medellin doing to ensure the right of future generations? If we look at, in terms of urban growth, which is inevitable, something that is happening in Latin America, we're saying that 80% of the population live today in urban cores of the city. If we talk about 2030, we say that 85% of the population will be in urban areas. Today, we have issues that we still have not solved. So the question is, how do we anticipate to it? So how can we anticipate? anticipate these events uh, so that we can prevent these problems in the future. When we talk about sustainability and the care for the environment, there are things that are absolutely necessary. We talk about transportation, sustainable mobility, impacts on the quality of life of persons, but also of the environment. Issues that have to do with housing, but housing around the equipment and no more creation of suburbia or ghettos where 
their people don't have the culture of public utilities. I would concentrate in the first one, which is one of the big debts that we have in Latin America and which is common to all our cities. If there is something that generates social gaps and which should generate sustainability, it is the way that we move. Those who spend more, those who have to invest more to move around in Latin American cities are the poorest. Those who spend the most time is those who least have. So if we talk about sustainable cities, the integrated mass transit systems play a very important role. The restructuring of the collective uh, transportation systems are very important. We've been working, working very hard as a city, but we still need more when we make those decisions, but we do so with uh, clean fuels with systems like the metro, the metro cables, the, uh, all those mass transit systems are definitely the way to improve the health of people even. And I close with this uh, piece of data. Many times you talk about pollution and the quality of air, and you think, when will it be that our city is going to collapse because of the lack of clean air? Now, in March, for example, we had an environmental emergency, and we have to reformulate the way that we move, the way the kind of fuels that we use. I think that there are issues that are absolutely necessary in the agenda of Latin American cities, like mobile cities, for example. We have to create a debate about urban security. Security is no nothing that belongs to the right or to the left. Uh, it's not a question of ideology. Crime is crime. And we have to do a lot of social investment. You have two cities that are very uh, close in number of population. Medellin, 3.8 million in the metropolitan area. And Ecuador, 2 point, and in Quito, 2.6. Is it easier to integrate uh, mass transit systems in medium-sized cities like yours? And is it harder in, in large cities? What is, your, what is your experience? Well, we are convinced, just like Federico, of the importance of uh, heading toward a sustainable mobility axis. But the execution of a sustainable development agenda should not be applied only adequately, but it should be measured adequately. In that sense, in Quito, we have established systems to measure the carbon uh, footprint, uh, which allows us to uh, prepare a baseline, to measure a baseline. Baseline. And we have established an agenda of actions to reduce that footprint. What are these actions? Well, in the first place, what we just mentioned, a sustainable mobility in Quito, we have begun the construction of the first metro line, which there is no doubt will become the central axis of an integrated mass transit system, which will be supplemented with a system of uh, cable cars like the one that Medellin has. And in Quito, we will begin the first line and in a month, the second line. And that is supplemented by DRT systems, uh, public uh, transportation systems through an exclusive lane. And we have decided that everything, that this is all an operation that is going to allow us to reduce by approximately 150,000 tons of uh, carbon, the footprint, the existing footprint, because by a 56% the footprint in Quito corresponds to mobility. So that is where we must focus our greatest efforts. This action is supplemented with a scheme of integral handling of waste, of decontamination of rivers, of preservation of natural areas. Today, we have approximately 150,000 hectares in the Metropolitan District of Quito declared as natural protected areas. We hope to get to 300,000 hectares. And with that, we will be capturing 10 billion tons of carbon. 
I would like the mayor of Medellin to answer this question also so that uh, we know what he's planning. What was it that curbed in Medellin the fact that the transportation model, the cable cars and everything that has become benchmarks for other cities in Colombia and other cities in Latin America, what curbed its development? What made it be not that fast? Well, I think that restructuring the uh, transportation system, the public transportation system, is a question of uh, political will. Now, those who finance the politicians are the operators of urban transportation. We, it was clear to us that we wanted to make that transportation in the cities, and we did not receive one peso from those who are interested in the collective public uh, transportation system. The city has made wonderful progress uh, in everything that has to do with the lines that are supplementary to the metro. Each uh, mayor fi must find uh, the best system when we talk about the expansion of the metro, we're not only just uh, talking about the metro, but about different transportation systems according to the topography, to the terrain. Now, you've seen our city. It's a valley surrounded by mountains, and that in 1970, from 1970 on, that made us grow toward the edges in high-risk areas where it's not a sustainable model. And so the first cable car system was on in the Northeast, but the idea is not to do these projects as such and independently, but to make them be consolidated. They uh, we they have uh, the social investment must be done in education in public utilities, and uh, but we must know how to grow the city. Should we continue growing and expanding, or should we grow toward the inside of the city where there's transportation and infrastructure? What is your bet? The expansive one, or, or the, no? No cities cannot continue to grow to the uh, toward the outside. We have to use the transportation lines that we have. Yeah, but accompanied by a reduction in the quality of life, not necessarily. As long as you have transportation systems and the necessary equipment and public space, that is where definitely a strategy works and where uh, housing is key. My mother used to tell me, look, Federico, not to, to, having a house does not make you rich, but not having you makes you very poor. But it's then, but this is not just giving a, a, a house to somebody who lives in a public space. In Latin America, for example, we have made mistakes thinking that with expansion areas and we are going to solve the problems because we are creating entire cities with no good utilities, with no good equipment, and what we're doing is expanding the, the issues the problem, so that is why having those plans is key. But those execution projects, and most surely the one that Mauricio has been executing in Quito is going to give them great benefits, uh, social benefits. Now we're seeing another Metro Cable that is on its way. We are going to do the Picacho Avenue. So these are projects that are going to impact very much. Your mother was very wise. And uh, now we're talking about security. If you allow me, I would like to talk about urban planning, which I think is a fundamental tool for sustainable development. We have a unique uh, juncture in Quito, and it's this transformation that we are creating in the mass transit system, which allows us a new vision of urban planning based on the diversification that Federico was mentioning, which is the new trend. Instead of having cities that are expanding, we should concentrate them and make them grow uh, from bottom up. Now, we are going to reward those uh, uh, buildings that are next to the next uh, to the next stations of the public transportation system so that they can so that they can grow more if they meet the criteria of uh, coefficient saving of um, 
saving of energy, and also that contribute landscaping to the city. In the past, normally, you required a, a minimum number of parking spaces. Now, a maximum number of parking spaces so that there's not many, because we want to generate centralities around these new poles of public transportation. Centralities where people can live, can work, can go shopping, can go to the park, can go to the museum, and go educate themselves in a relatively small amount of land so that you reduce the travel times that, and that is reflected in better quality of life and less pollution and you stimulate the use of public transportation. That is why we are going to reward the buildings that are close to the new public transportation stations, hoping that they are tall buildings and that their inhabitants uh, do the most amount of activities uh, close to the stations and so that they use the public transportation systems. This is a planned way to reach development. Well, concentration can also bring many issues if it doesn't guarantee a safe or a secure system. If citizens don't feel secure, obviously that it does not that does not help the quality of life of the inhabitants. Now. How have you faced the challenge of security in the cities, taking into account also that we are in Medellin, a city whose past still marks it in the collective imaginarium? And so the challenge of security, I would like a comment from each one of you about the challenge of security. Well, although security has to do with a complex uh, uh, network of factors, of course, of course, uh, city governments can do a lot in the struggle, and they can do so by rescuing the public space. You mean more police? Well, not necessarily. It may be one of the elements, but uh, maybe more useful would be to rescue spaces which are dark and neglected, where crime is committed, and turn them into spaces with adequate infrastructure, understanding that wherever their citizens uh, coexist, or civilized uh, citizens, they will attract uh, fun and uh, relaxation uh, of the families and making the spaces uh, safe. Now, we, the, uh, Medellin, for example, has these cable cards that we're implementing in Quito, and that can contribute that type of uh, benefit because it's not only the cable card, it's all the recomposition, the urban recomposition that the use of cable cards uh, implies. And that is uh, that helps uh, to the recovery of the public space. Alcalde, Mayor, Mayor, Mayor Gutierrez, well, that past was very painful for us. And just to give you some figures, what we experienced in 1991 had 381 crimes per 100,000 inhabitants. No city in the world experienced what Medellin experienced, and we don't want to experience it either. I think that it has touched a bare bottom, and it's been very difficult to get to where we are now that we have a World Economic Forum, now that we have all of you visiting us. From that past, we, we put uh, soil on top of that past, uh, but we have not forgotten it. But social investment is key to continue reaching areas where the state was not present. That is absolutely necessary. But we have to also understand that there are structures of organized crime that we have to combat. How do we combat? combat organized crime, not only having more and more and more police. There is an, there's a key issue in Latin America, and here it's got to be a big struggle, and it's a struggle against corruption. If you don't combat corruption, if you don't have reliable institutions, it's going to be very difficult to get out of that situation today. Medellin is at a rate of 18 homicides per every 100,000. Our goal this year is to continue reducing it to 15. But uh, some elements such as justice are key. 
articulated efforts in the case of Colombia between the prosecutor's office, the police, and the army and uh, also civilians, but we cannot think that it, uh, depending on that security depends on the ideology. Sometimes it happened to me in Mexico. I would ask the mayors if it was a right-wing mayor. He said, oh, lots of police. If it was a leftist mayor, he said, no, I will only do the social part because I don't believe in the police. No, if there is no integral strategy, you will never have a secure city. That is what citizens are claiming more and more. And I think that these changes are key. Technology is key also, but there is no doubt that justice, justice is one of those topics where we have to have an actual change. Mayor unemployment plays an important role in this problem of insecurity because it is said that if you're unemployed that you can um, turn rogue. Well, yes, uh, it's very, very important to generate more and better jobs. It is very important for us to make progress toward an, a good education, and that is why Medellin's strategy is key from the standpoint of, a, of beginning well, handling children between zero and five years of age, uh, teaching them from the values from the beginning and relevance of the education we offer children is absolutely key. Being competitive is absolutely key. Uh, continue to invest in activities related to uh, innovation, science, and technology. And there's something that for Medellin is fundamental. And I see some people here, I see Manuel Santiago here, among other people. And what has actually made the difference here is that there is a very articulated work between the private companies, the universities, and the government. For us, that has been key. So against uh, and against job and against uh, unemployment, well, we have to work uh, for competitiveness, but we also have to create an environment that offers uh, jobs that offers uh, security and a competitive environment. Uh, that really depends on clear signs of legal stability. And we have to also offer concrete incentives to the private sector on a permanent basis. We have to talk permanently to the private sector. We must understand that the public sector must be an ally of the private sector. We all, together, we have to look for the best solution. We also believe that there are mechanisms that can be terribly productive to improve the unemployment situation in our countries. For example, public or private associations, that is actually key. That is an aspect where Latin America has been growing, some countries more than others. I think that we must improve the regulatory framework for these PPAs, but it's a, an ideal option to offer. On the best hand, better infrastructure, better service to the citizens, encourage participation of the private company and then generate more jobs. And then I am going to ask you a last question and then we will open the floor up for a Q&A session. What about drugs, uh, criminalization, not criminalization, or, or, or neither? Well, it's a complex debate. At least talking about my city, I think we're still not uh, prepared to decriminalize uh, drugs. I think that we have to make a very deep uh, and well thought analysis. And once there is a better consensus and awareness among the citizens, we might uh, think about it. Mayor Gutierrez, well, it's a problem of uh, public health, and it derives in a public order situation. As long as uh, there is a debate on the criminalization, for example, in Colombia, the, uh, the minimum dose of marijuana is now approved. And But what do we do? We have to uh, persecute these different networks. We have to create secure environments uh, around uh, schools, for example. But we have to give it a public health 
uh, focus that for for us is key. We cannot treat uh, the same person uh, the same. We have to make a difference between a drug addict and a drug uh, distributor. Here, it, here we have to talk about education and the model of education, and it is what is happening in Latin America. The responsibility for the children, is it up only to the state or is it the families? Uh, people tend to think that they deliver the children to the state and they get them back when they, when they turn 18. No, that is not true. The education of children has to be the responsibility of schools uh, and of parents equally. And uh, Mauricio also mentioned something that I think is key for the development of sustainable cities. Uh, having sustainable cities is, is costly. It's more costly not to have them, but we need that urgently due to the climate change. If we sit there and wait until we have the public resources, uh, we will never do the big transformations. What uh, Mauricio mentions about the PPAs is key. We need to create these alliances, and we need the actual tools to do it. In this development plan, and for example, almost 15% of uh, resources will be required through PPAs. We have 40 projects already defined where we have invited the private sector to participate. We're talking about one point eighty nine thousand million or 1.89 billion pesos. In, uh, but for there to be PPAs, you need trust, you need a good entrepreneurial environment. Now, let us open the floor for some question, uh, for a question and answer session. I have more questions, but I uh, promise that I would g give the audience the possibility of interacting with, the, with our mayors. <laughs> Your name and a very brief question. Lina Mesquita from uh, Guatemala City. I would like to ask both of you, maybe not cities, but as a global perspective, what happens? Will we have to, at a given point in the growth of our population, of our cities, do we have to establish maximum parking spaces? Do we need to get there? Because at a given point, the density in those concentrations that you talk about is going to be impossible. And what are we going to do at the world level when we get to that point in the curve? Well, I think that evidently we must begin imposing limits gradually, but at the same time, we must improve the alternatives that citizens have. I think it's difficult to establish harsh restrictions if we don't offer a good quality transportation system. So that is why we have to establish those types of restrictions to the extent that we generate actual alternatives. In the cities in the world, where most popular population uses public transportation, they do it because it's a quality service. And because it is a quality service, it's possible to di disincentivate uh, the use of private cars. In, uh, uh, but restrictions are not the only mechanism. But that is a process where we have to uh, quickly make uh, progress, and we have to make progress with total firmness and enthusiasm, obviously encouraging the participation of citizens, but not, but not only for the use of mass transit systems, but also the system of non-motor uh, devices like bicycles, for example. Bicycles uh, connect not only with conventional bicycles, but we're one of the few cities in the world where we have incorporated electric uh, bicycles, uh, in spite of the fact that our city is in the middle of mountains uh, with very steep uh, streets, and those discourage many people from using bicycles today, thanks to electric bicycles. We have uh, women, uh, we have elderly people using those in Medellin. You also have bicycles, yes, and there's going to be many more. And you have restrictions? Okay, so I'm going to answer the question. 
And I think the best way to uh, discourage uh, the use of private uh, transportation is through is, is by improving and providing excellent public transportation systems. The tramway, the uh, metro, all those uh, mass transit systems. We are going to build 80 new kilometers in four years, for example. Today, we have uh, 1,500 bicycles using our streets. And we, and our goal is to reach that situation where we think not only of the city, but the metropolitan area. We cannot continue thinking only as an independent city. The metropolitan areas are absolutely key when it comes to mobility, but we need to make the decisions and make progress. Today, we have a good understanding with the 10 mayors of the area. It's the same air that we all breathe, we all pollute it, and also citizen, citizen culture is key for sustainable cities and why? Because we all say, ah, oh, no, the thing is that pollution is so bad, but we all pollute. We are all part of the city, so I think that it's key to turn citizens into allies. Okay, uh, this chat, we have run out of time for this chat, and I want to ask you, about what you would like as mayors with your experience, what would be the new agenda? What would you like the new agenda for Habitat 3 to include? What are you going to ask Santa for? Well, uh, there is uh, something very concrete that I have been uh, suggesting for many years. I think that it's positive for, to include for the first time uh, the local mayors in the agenda. I think it's logical, but we should go beyond. If we have had a voice in the construction of the new urban agenda, now we need a concrete and institutionalized role in the execution and in the follow-up of the agenda internationally, and I refer specifically to the UN scheme. I think that it's high time that local governments have a concrete, specific, and effective role in the UN system regarding the execution and follow-up, the preparation and follow-up of the new agenda, because otherwise it's going to be very uh, difficult for mayors to do anything in that sense. And that is going to benefit not only the cities and sustainable development, but also the UN system itself, which is going to become more legitimate after 50 years. Evidently, it requires a reform because it is not responding to the new, to the modern reality. Mayor, and with you, we will close. Okay, we. I think we know what is going to happen in Quito. They are going to have an agenda. Well, uh, considering the importance of mayors uh, influencing the type of cities that we want for people, cities for people, where first you have the pedestrian, then the biker, then public transportation, and finally uh, goods and private uh, transportation. That defines the type of cities that we want, all the commitments regarding climate change, where the governments have been acquiring commitments, uh, a model of, econ of, of economy and an inclusive growth model, which is a big discussion of this forum. The importance of education, the quality of education, the access to good to quality jobs, social innovation, whereas, which are so fundamental. And the big discussion in Latin America, which is urban security. Urban security is where we have to work very hard. But urban security comes in a combination of many of these strategies, social strategies, and control regarding crime. And crime is not domestic only. Crime in Latin America is mutating permanently. Crime seeks to have more and more territorial control, not only of a city, but a, but a full of, of, of entire countries phenomena like micro extortion. Those are things that we need to discuss in detail. And that discussion uh, we may have uh, later on. Well, thank you to you both, the uh, mayors, for your comments. This is not in my script, but I would say that you both have the cities in the center of your plans. Thank you very much.